What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and show where I, Graham G.S. and Matthews, break down all the original content you watch on the WWE Network and on Peacock. And today we're talking the May 20th, 2023 edition of the SmackDown Lowdown. Filling in for Jackie Redman this week was not Scott Stanford, but rather Mackenzie Mitchell alongside Matt Camp. Uh, Mackenzie's great. She's great as an interviewer on NXT. She does a majority of the digital content for WWE on their YouTube channel for like WWE Now, what Kathy Kelly used to do. I don't know if we've seen her do the hosting gig, though, as far as like this sort of show, um, the pre-show panel, stuff like that. I don't know if she's done that before. She did a great job, and she's, she'll only get better the more experience she has. Um, again, they didn't say that she's filling in solely for Jackie this week only, although I assume that's the case. But I thought she did a good job, though. So to start out the show, they hype up the United Champions matches, the top three matches, the tag team title match, Cody Rhodes and Brock, as well as the... Um, what was the other match? Holy shit. Obviously, the World Heavyweight Championship Tournament Finals between AJ Styles and Seth Rollins. They replay the Grayson Waller effect with Grayson Waller and AJ Styles and hype up AJ Styles versus Karrion Cross for next week's show, as well as AJ versus Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship at Night of Champions. They recap the Brawling Broods Pretty Deadly match uh, that saw Pretty Deadly pick up the victory. They were interviewed backstage by Megan Morant on this show. And all they got out was a yes boy before they were quickly attacked by Butch. Not Ridge, just Butch, who said it was fight night and beat the shit out of him. So clearly some unresolved issues there between the two teams. Uh, Matt Cam says that more of the same can be expected from Pretty Deadly, who are both pretty and deadly and bring a lot to the SmackDown tag team division. Speaking of tag teams, they hype up the match to crown the new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions for Raw, not this coming Monday, but the Monday after that, because Liv got hurt. So Raquel is going for the gold again with a new partner. I would honestly, I wasn't even thinking about it until Matt Camp brought it up here because he mentioned um, her tag team experience. He mentioned Aaliyah, and we haven't seen Aaliyah on the show in a long fucking time. I think since September, when she and Raquel first lost the tag team titles to Damage Control. Raquel later regained them, obviously, with Liv about a month ago, and they're a much better team. I think Aaliyah has been clear this whole time. She talks a lot of shit on Twitter as far not shit, but like. She's, she's constantly said, I'm cleared, I'm cleared, I'm cleared. She's obviously not important enough to be reported on by any of these outlets. I mean, <laughs> I'm kind of curious what her whereabouts are. Like, she wasn't involved in the draft. Are there just no creative plans for her? And if so, then why is she even still there? It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, I think we could see her return next week on SmackDown and maybe reunite with Raquel. Because, again, there's no other place for her on the show. Unless they just use her as a jobber or put her back in NXT, which, again, at that point... What's even the point? She's been in NXT for like a fucking decade now. Uh, very weird. I just thought I would throw that out there, though. But it's going to be Raquel and a partner of her choosing. Damage controls Bailey and EO Sky, Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville, and Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler, who I assume will take the titles in that match. We hear uh, from Damage Control on the show. No Dakota Kai. Bailey shouts her out at the beginning of the interview here. Uh, I believe she was also hurt the during that tag team title match last week. They didn't say with what, but they just said she was hurt. She wasn't on SmackDown either. Bailey shouts her out, like I said. Um, they don't think Raquel can find another partner, and they're confident that they're going to win. And EO says that they'll take the championships back to Dakota. And they don't really tease any tension here. I hope this doesn't really delay that. I really do want a Bailey eo feud split coming soon. EO was really, really over a backlash. Capitalize off that, please. And, and, and you know, follow up on it with a push for EO on her own. That's all I can really ask for. Um, they also recap the Austin Theory Sheamus segment. That's all Sheamus lay out Theory and set up next week's United States Championship match on SmackDown. They hype that up. They replay Asuka versus Vega from SmackDown. That was won by Asuka. Um, they hype up Bianca Belair versus Asuka for the Raw Women's Championship, although they're two SmackDown superstars. Whatever. Um, Matt Cam says that Bianca must avoid the mist and not take her lightly. If she wants to uh, emerge victorious at Night of Champions, that's his advice for Bianca. He also says that Asuka plays mind games and to watch out for that going into the pay-per-view and out the pay-per-view itself. They recap the opening segment, the face-off between Roman Reigns, Solo Sokoa, Sami Zayn, and Kevin Owens, as well as the main event that saw the LWO's Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar knock off the Usos in tag team action. Rey Mysterio says that people will... He's interviewed backstage, obviously, with Santos by Megan Moran backstage. He says that people, you know, he, he went into this match thinking the Usos were the greatest of all time. He thinks now people will start to think otherwise now that they've beaten them. And Escobar says the LWO is for hope, uh, provides hope for those fighting every day. 
And Ray says that they do it. They do the LWO for their people. Uh, very heart well, uh, very heartwarming interview here from uh, Santos and Ray. And you can tell Santos is just fucking loving life right now. They don't win a lot. They did win on Friday. They've lost a lot of their matches otherwise. But Santos is out there having a blast, uh, teaming with Ray, and just uh, teaming with one of his childhood idols, I assume. He's talked a lot about Ray in other interviews, including with my own and, and the few times I've talked to him. And Santos is, uh, he's just great. So I'm, I'm really happy for him and him being in that role. And then to close it out here, um, they hype up the tag team title match for Night of Champions, Owens and Zayn, defending against Roman Reigns and Solo and Night of Champions. And they also hype up for next week's SmackDown, the KO show, which we'll see basically what we saw on SmackDown. I guess just a continuation of it. Owens and Zayn sitting down with Roman and Solo. Uh, so I said this in my SmackDown audio review yesterday. I don't think they're doing a SmackDown lowdown next week because the pay-per-view is so early. Typically, they don't do SmackDown lowdown on the weekends where there's a Saudi show or even Clash of the... I mean, I don't think there was one, the, the Clash of the Castle weekend, but if it's like an earlier show like we're getting next week, 1 p.m. Eastern time, this show usually drops at noon. So maybe they do do the show earlier at, at noon, and I don't know really what the point of that would be. The pre-show starts at noon. I don't think they're doing it. So I'm going off the presumption that they're not doing it. I will check just in case. If they do, I'll review it for Sunday, most likely. And that'll be it. But very likely next week in no SmackDown audio review because I just don't have time to break down the show before the pay-per-view on Saturday. And very likely no SmackDown lowdown as well. So just keep that in mind for next week. But be sure to like this video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. Hit the bell button as well to be notified every time a new video goes up. Have an awesome one, guys. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.